The Live and Alive Tour is off and running. St. Louis, I will see you on August 4th and 5th. L.A., local show here, August 11th. Tampa, Florida, August 18th and 19th with Steve Simone. Springfield, Missouri, September 1st and 2nd. Tulsa, Oklahoma, September 15th and 16th. Phoenix, Arizona, September 29th and 30th. Salt Lake City, I'll see you all October 27th and the 28th. And San Francisco, California, I'm coming back December 8th and 9th. Get your tickets to all shows at ryansickler.com. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to the Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it in the Night Pan Studios. I'm Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com, and Ryan Sickler on all your social media. And again, thank you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting this show. Please subscribe. It really helps. It's a free way to help the show. It means a lot to us. Continue to support that special out there, y'all. Thank you so much. Um, I Look, you know, you, you do all this yourself. You put it out there, and then you just have to move on. So thank you guys for uh, sticking around, supporting it, sharing it, and all that. And if you got to have more of this, then I am telling you, you have got to have the Patreon. It's called The Honeydew With Y'all, and I do this same show with y'all, and y'all have the wildest stories I've ever heard. I love my job. Every week I, I say, I don't know where, where, how we're going to top that, and we top it. Every week I'm hearing something else. Double lung transplants, uh, hostage situations where they get away and kill the, the, uh, the whatever, the enemy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's five bucks a month. And if you or someone you know has a story that has to be heard, please submit it to honeydewpodcast at gmail.com. All right. And if you're looking, sorry, let me say it like this. If you're looking for a, a new podcast to listen to, listen to my old podcast, The Crab Feast. It's a seven and a half year library of everybody you know and love in comedy. Today's guest included. I said, how many did you did at least one? He got upset because he said he did about three. And I'll bet you it's probably two. I'll bet it's probably at two. least one though is <laughs> it's low. Come out and see me on tour. I will be in Tampa, Florida, August 18th and 19th. Steve Simone coming with me for that one. All right. It's gonna be a fun show, Tampa. Get out there. Springfield, Missouri. Never been there to do comedy. September 1st and 2nd. Tulsa, Oklahoma, September 15th. And 16th, one stopped in Tulsa, Oklahoma on a drive across the country, bought a uh, an iguana, bought a baby iguana, took it back home. Yeah, uh, it was a good little lizard, sold it in the end when I moved. So uh, come out, get your tickets at ryansickler.com. Uh, I'm going to tell you about that real quick. <laughs> All tickets at ryansickler.com. Uh now, we're highlighting the low lights over here. I'm already talking to our guest today because I'm just very excited to have this guy back. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Gareth Reynolds. Welcome back to the Honeydew, Gareth. Thank you for having me, Ryan. Sold this Damn. iguana. I had an iguana, and then I bought a smaller one. And okay. we named it Izzy because it was the fastest thing I've ever seen in my life. It was nonstop. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? And then this guy- Did it have a cage? Okay. We had a terrarium. Yeah. That a, listen, we're white trash that a friend built. Okay. Right. I said cage, so I'm even trash here. Well, it was part cage. Wood, wood frame. Uh-huh. Okay. All plexiglass. Uh-huh. The top area cage, chicken wire. Sure. You know. Yeah. Um, Industry standard. Black light for night, white light for day. Okay. It's a black night that, that they sell at to the see store. Where it ejaculated and right. <laughs> for nocturnal. Yeah, for nocturnal emissions. Yeah, emissions. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, just a branch, you yeah. know, what a guano sure, yeah, yeah. And then food in the bottom and yeah. stuff. Uh, and it had a cage he built so you could slide it out and change the poop and everything. So sure. we just had this. You mean this. put in fresh poop. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, right. We had this thing in there. And I'm moving, and I just put it for free. I'm not trying to sell it. And this guy comes to get it. And he's in love with it, right? He's probably the, I, the, you could make a show about who shows up for a free iguana. Too free iguana. It would be like a To Catch a Predator cast. <laughs> Too free. Gets, Take a sit, Darren. This is where it gets weird. I'm not, you just made me remember this. I'm not even kidding. This happened. So um, I'm, you know, whatever. I'm in my mid-20s, early 20s. So, um, 
he's like, you might help me carry this thing out. And I was like, no problem. And we put it, he puts it on his roof. Okay. This whole, it's, it's six foot. Right. Straps it all down. His girlfriend sitting in the car in the passenger seat. Nice. They're, they're a white couple. Nice. Seemed nice enough. He sure. seemed like clean cut college kid or maybe just out of college. And, um, he keeps like peeking around. We're at the back of the trunk now, putting whatever else in. He keeps peeking around. And the girl's sitting in the car. And, you know, she said hi. And I say, how you doing? Whatever. And um, he's like, you want to see something? He gives me to want to see something. A stranger. And I'm seeing him peek around there because I'm standing on that side. I'm like, what? And he's like, let me show you something. And he takes this little photo album out under this blanket in the, in the trunk. And it's just all the chicks he's fucking <laughs> and cheating on his girlfriend or wife with or whatever she is. And he's just showing me. He's like, look at this one right here. This one's down at Glen Burnie. I'm like, what like, the buddy, fuck? Just, we need a guana room. I, this guy loved an iPhone. Oh, because yeah. this is like what that's you know the, what I mean. This I'm is like, like there that's you go. Exa- keep keep swiping. Keep swiping. That is exactly what when you it hit was. the baseball cards. I'm done. <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> what I want. Just one of those little you know pocket flip Yeah, ones. yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. Anyway, it's, good it's a to case have you logic here. for pussy. <laughs> Good to have you here. Yeah, good to be uh, here. Before we get started, please plug, promote everything Gareth Reynolds. Uh, all right. Well, I got a, a stand-up special and a crowd work special, both which you can go watch on the All Things Comedy YouTube page. Uh, the crowd work special is called Gareth's Volume 1. My special is called England yeah. Weed and the Rest. You can go to my website if you like, GarethReynolds.com. Click the special link. You can find both those. Also, my tour dates are on there, and uh, I'll be everywhere, uh, and then probably not sure where I'll be when this comes out. So go to GarethReynolds.com for that stuff. And listen to The Dollop. It's my podcast. And also, your other podcast. The Pastimes. Yeah. Yeah. You know the name of it. You Pastimes. Say it. Yeah, The Pastimes. I was on it. Have yeah. I been on it yet? Has it been released? I don't You've know. been on it. Hasn't been released. <laughs> Once you get the name right, we'll put it out. Yeah. You keep calling it Times, Times Past. Past the? Right. <laughs> the end. <laughs> uh. Um, all right, listen, let's just get into this today because you know what this show is. By the way, if you haven't seen Gareth's first episode, you got to, or last episode, I should Only say. episode. Okay. Well, yeah, I, see, now you're being very I delicate. I can't remember. Okay? Yeah, but you don't want to be like, you, yeah, I, yeah, I understand. You're I about know. to get vulnerable, Even so try to be podcast, delicate. Even on my podcast, people are like, you don't remember when that guy like ate his friend? I'm like, hey, there's been a lot of episodes. But you're being delicate now because you under undervalued my crab feast so now you're like yeah the last time you were here it's only been one it was more about less about undervaluing your crab feast and more about seeing the sensitivity within that that i wanted i didn't come i'm not an iguana in a white trash cage right now i'm not here to be toyed with (laughs) okay well said but afterwards come to the trunk of my car I got, I, want, to I got something to show you. It's the nineties. <laughs> it was the nineties, yeah. but I didn't know cell phone. Or he would have been like, pew, 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 yeah, pew. yeah, yeah. It would have been, yeah, in a, in a file He's called like, cat videos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She doesn't check cat videos. Um, so you have a story, yeah, you, and you say you've not. This is exclusive. This is exclusive. All right, let's do it. Um, yeah, I've never. I actually, the last time I was here, I said to you, I was like, I do have one. Um, that I am. I've just always been really hesitant to talk about um, for a number of reasons. Um, One is that it is a bit of a whopper. So the other is that, um, well, let's just get into it. So, okay. So the dollop, my podcast starts before that I, you know, like you or anyone was really trying to, I was trying to, you know, get ahead and stand up and just nobody really gave a shit. So I really kind of fell into like writing. I just started writing. I was writing on shows and um, and was very lucky, but was still like, oh, I want to perform. But that I kind of was like, yeah, I guess that's not going to happen or whatever. It's going to take forever. And then the dollop hits. And then I'm like, all of a sudden, it, it kind of warped my mind because, you know, in like the stand up world, like, you know, you go clubs, you know theaters eventually like hopefully. all that st- hopefully yeah and the dollop just kind of was like theaters quickly so i real quick was just from like oh i probably won't be performing to like oh wow i'm like <laughs> doing theaters and so much came out of that like where i was so kind of overstimulated and gratified by that experience that you know fully was taking advantage was partying 
was like, you know, we, we would sell our own merch like after shows for the first couple years. And like, you know, I would be like, I would meet women after the show, like selling merch and go get drinks and like hook up. And that was just like, and then, you know, you're getting like, I was getting like female attention on a level where I was like, I did not, you know, well, you know what it's like when random women are like, hey, I like you. And you're like, <laughs> you've don't. got the wrong gentleman. I don't yeah, know you do. Like. I don't. Stop it. I'm telling you. I Let me tell you something. Let me this take is, you to my car after this. This. Is, <laughs> this is a true story. I've never hooked up on the road. That's crazy. Never. Not one time. But I, that's because you don't want to. Exactly. Yeah. It, well, I don't, it's not that I don't have an urge, but also I think two things mostly. All right. Number one, I don't want a road baby. Sure. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. want some kid I can't have or yeah. be with. You couldn't or, handle an iguana. Right. Two yeah. of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? I bit off more than I could yeah. chew. STDs. Sure. Always freak me the fuck out. Sure. Always. Yeah. So I also am worried about being robbed. Those are my top three. Okay. Those are, listen. Well, you're going to like I'm this I'm in Fort story. Wayne, Indiana. And <laughs> you want to go back to where or me to go to your place. Next thing I know, bing, bang, boom. Two guys come in all near around the corner. You're all splitting the money three ways. I, that's my mindset about things in life. So that's a very smart way of approaching it. I did not have that way of approaching it. Listen, in 20 years, I've never done that on the road. Oh, ever. dude, I I mean, people Especially I went on the- women when I like when I date girlfriends, they don't believe it at all. And I'm like, I'm telling you, it's not happened. Well, OK, so. So there are literally like, you know, there were there are just like women like just, you know, popping in my DMs, just like, you know, aggressive. And I I while I don't think I ever had that. Pr I didn't have a small modicum of that issue. I just all of a sudden was like, oh, shit, like. I could hook up with this girl. I could hook up with that girl. So I start talking to this one woman through DMs on Instagram. And um, we go back and forth. And she's, whatever, nice and, you know, sending me, like, animal videos and shit like that. And so that's pretty good for me. And um, so I'm like, yeah, let's get a drink, you know. I'd gone out. I really wouldn't go out with, like, a lot of women from can I, Instagram. Can I just stop you there yeah. for a second? Is this a local lady? Yes. Okay, so it's not a, sh a woman local. you've met at a show or you're planning to meet no. at a show. Okay. No. All right. But when I – so I go in – and at the time, I'm working on um, Arrested Development, which the hours are nuts. You wrote on that? Yeah, last Oh, season. hell yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, so – and the hours are totally nuts. So you do kind of – you are kind of, like, sacrificing your social life for that show. Um, to some extent, you know, and, and they were very nice. They let me like go off and do shows and stuff like that, but that wasn't like free time. It was mm -hmm. like, my schedule was pretty, pretty cramped. And, um, so I go meet her for a drink and, um, you know, we start talking and, um, she is very like, you know, she knows the podcast and she's lives part-time in Vegas and, um, you know, is, is talking a lot about like, her exes and she seems to have dated a number of people who are like in the business and stuff like that. But, but I'm also just like not thinking in any realm of anything other than like, this is going to maybe be a hookup. And, um, and I'm not even sure if we're going to hook up. Um, but I live close to where we go and get a drink. And as she's driving me back, I wasn't, and this kind of sounds dickish, but I'm just being honest. Like, I wasn't thinking like, oh, we're going to go hook up. I was kind of thinking like, ride home and we'll see what happens. But she was excited and she was excited to meet my cat, which has happened before where I'm like, my cat is like become arguably mm -hmm. a bigger draw than me, not even just on the road, but also, you know, like with that. And so, and so I'm kind of like, okay, whatever. So we go up to my place. We have a couple more drinks. Anyway, we end up hooking up and she meets my cat and he's so down to earth. And Did you um, meet her cat? Oh yeah. We met <laughs> I met her cat. And um, and so I'm very clear up front. Like, I do not want anything serious. I don't have time for anything serious. But but we're starting to hook up, you know, whatever. How old is she? She's maybe five, six years younger than me. Okay. So, you know, she's 20. Um, no. Uh, but, but she's a little younger than me. And um, so that's going on. But then I'm still also getting, you know, DMs from from random women and there's this one woman on Twitter who I start messaging with and um she's like a uh like a makeup artist who lives in Burbank and um and we start messaging and it gets 
very sexual very quickly. And um, I'm sure this is probably her first time doing something like obviously. this. Obviously. Yeah. 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 This is good. You're going to feel like all your fears are unwarranted after this. <laughs> and um, and so, so it gets sexual very quick. I have no idea what you're about to say. I, I so, can't so wait. So the one that I'd gone out with, she, she told me that she had worked like, you know, in like the, shall I say, um, sex industry lightly. Mm-hmm. Like it kind of been like a dominatrix type person for a couple years back yeah, there. Well, whatever. Well, that, that, that doesn't bother me. Well, I did the naughty show with Sam Tripoli. Yeah. Like I was like, that's fine. That's where I met That's you. industry standard. That's mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um and so she gets sexual very quickly. And she's like talking about like right away sex and all this stuff. And and it starts off okay. And then right away I'm like, eh, this is a, like a lot early. And then she reveals that she's married. Uh, but it's an open relationship. And I'm like, I don't feel very comfortable with that. And um and then she's like telling me stuff about how she went to a sex club and she's like, I got DP'd last night. And I'm like, last night. Yeah. And I'm and I'm like, a camera operator? Uh but I, but so I'm like right away, I'm like, that's 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 one too many hours for me. ago. Yeah, like yeah, fresh. <laughs> you mean hours yeah. ago? Yeah. So so I'm like, no. <laughs> So I'm like, no to that. Um, Which two, by the way? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> There's yeah. one available. Which two? <laughs> yeah. Uh, she was like, do you want to see my book? She was like, here you go. I'll flip through that. I was like, I really. Um, so, okay. So, right. So I'm like turned off by that situation. But, and then I'm still sort of seeing, um, Michelle is the one who I was like, I'd been going out with. And um, so I'm still sort of seeing Michelle. And then, the one on on Twitter is this woman named Angela, and she's like, she one day is like, I just realized we have someone in common in our lives. And I'm like, who? She's taking days to get back. I'm going, who is it? And she's like, I've worked with Michelle. I'm a makeup artist. Michelle's modeled for stuff. Like, I know her. And I'm like, oh. And she's like, I saw her at a party, and we just got to talking, and I told her that you and I were flirting. And I'm like, well, Jesus Christ. So again, I'm not like dating Michelle. But I feel like when I see her next, her. yes, right. yes, yeah, she's been inside my place. I've been inside her place, right, yeah. and I've never seen her home. Right. And uh, and so, so I like kind of contextualize it when I'm when I'm talking to her. I'm like, oh yeah, you know. And she's like, no, it's cool. You can do whatever. And I'm like, yeah, I know, but I'm not flirting with her. Like she told me she got DP'd, and she is, you know. And then along the way, she's like, I'm pregnant, but that doesn't matter. Like stuff like, and I'm just going, I'm not like this is just crazy. So um. So, so whatever, this goes on for a while. And then, um, she keeps messaging me, Angela keeps messaging me and I keep kind of ignoring it. And then Michelle, like I said, lives part-time in Vegas. So then there's the Vegas shooting, right? Mm. And, um, and Michelle, I go to bed early because of arrested development, not because I was arrested. Uh, and I go to, and I go to bed early and I wake up and she's like, Hey, I'm like at the Mandalay Bay, all this stuff. There's been a shooting, all this shit. And then like, I write back. She was at the. Well, I write back. I don't hear anything. So I'm like, what the fuck, you know? And um, Angela messages me and she goes, have you heard from Michelle? Like, we're trying to find her. Like, I'm talking to her ex because she had a kid. She's like, I'm talking to her ex about whatever. And I'm, I'm like, no, I haven't. So I, I give her my number. I go, here's my number because I'm not going to be able to check my phone. I go, message me if, you know, like text message me if there's any update. And I'm worried all day. And then eventually Mich- Michelle texts me and she's like, I'm okay. I was, you know, I got like trampled, like so many people were running, like I got a concussion, I my phone broke, all this shit. So I'm like, holy shit, you know. But now I've given um, Angela my number, right? So, so Michelle continues to be like very helpful. Like I'm going to Australia, and um, you know, it's just like a good presence and all that stuff. And so I go to Australia to tour, and okay, so part of it as well is that. There had been like a Facebook group started just about me, um, like whatever, like like fe- a fan page, like, like a female fan page, essentially, right? Wow, yeah, it was like two members, but still counts. <laughs> it does. Somebody still- had to go through, and it. I started it. I should it. point out, I'm the one who started it, but that counts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm the administrator of this site, but um, so so I'm in Australia, and um, and Michelle's like, oh yeah, I noticed this like fan site or whatever. And I really didn't know about it. And I was like, you know, do whatever. I don't give a shit. And um, so, like I said, Michelle has a kid. When I'm leaving Australia, um, a couple of things happen. One is that Angela is really putting the pressure on me to meet up with her. 
She's now texting me like all the time. When are we going to meet up? This is bullshit. Why are you meeting up with Michelle? Like she's like, I'm way hot or all this stuff. And I'm just like ignoring it for the most part. Every now and then just being like, you know, relax, whatever, leave me alone. And um, does she know that the uh, what's the other girl's name again? Michelle. Michelle. That her relationship is open and stuff. Is that why she worried? It, well, Michelle. So Michelle's the Instagram girl who I went out with. Right. Angela's the Twitter girl. She knows. Yeah. She's who, which like, one did you have sex with again? Michelle. All right. Um, and so she knows Angela's crazy. She's like, okay. yeah, she's wild. Like I've known her for, you know, a few years in the, like in this world. Um, so when I land, um, Michelle's texting me, Angela's like got a new gear. She's fucking losing her mind. She's posting these pictures of me that I didn't want to tell you were out there, but it's like nude modeling that I did. And, you know, I, they're out there. I did it under a different name. She found them and she's posting them, tagging you. And being like, you know, Gareth, what sleeps with this girl, and this is his kind of girl, and just stuff where I'm like looking on Twitter and I'm going, holy shit, like what the fuck, you know? And um, as well as she tells me directly, Angela, that she posted in that Facebook group that I was the father of her kid, Michelle's kid. What? And this picture. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? And it's all to leverage me to go out with her. And I'm just like, I'm not going to go Does out it with work you. It? <laughs> well, obviously, I'm married. Yeah. yeah. I, and I'm just like, no, fucking leave me alone, you know, like, fuck off. And so Michelle and I are talking about it, how it's out of control. And she's like, I blocked her. You should block her. And so I just block her number, you know, and I'm like, all right, whatever, which I've never done before. Um, so I blocked her number and I was like, okay, whatever. I asked her to take that picture down from that Facebook group, but it was like stressing me out, obviously, um, especially the Twitter stuff. Seeing all these posts. Well, let me. I'm not super intelligent. Uh, is it slander? What is it when you're falsely claiming that someone's the father? Yeah. Is it slander? I can't remember. I think Since it is slander a versus figure, libel. Is it yeah. slander? Is yes. that slander? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, so it is. And mm. I'm like, I'm flagging it, trying to get Twitter to take it down, all this shit. Michelle, meanwhile, is like, I feel really bad that I didn't tell you about this. I'm like, I don't give a shit, you know. But then about three hours later, I mean, I just landed like from that, like, space flight yeah and um a few hours later she texts angela texts me again from a different number she's like why did you block me all this stuff and i'm just like what the fuck so i just block that one right i'm like she's using her friend's number or whatever so or her husband's or husband's yeah or you know one of the dp guys there's <laughs> yeah, a lot of one options of the, yeah, for yeah, where she can get a phone um so so i blocked that then like later there's another text from another number and I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? And Michelle's like, same happening to me, texting me from random numbers. We both just keep blocking them. And what's the messages that are going to Michelle? Just, I mean, like stuff that's just like, you're such a slut. Like you, you just like- anger. Anger, just like I'm posting these pictures. All because she got you and- Yeah, all because I like, I think I was like, we'll get a drink. And then we didn't. Right. And so it's all, it's like, it's nonstop too, right? So then, like I said, I'm working on Arrested and- she is just like blowing up my phone. She's calling me from random numbers nonstop. I block the number, doesn't matter, new number. Texting me from random numbers, block that, doesn't matter, new number. Never ending numbers. Middle of the night texts. Hey, hi, what are you up to? Are you up? Oh, hey, I just found a picture of you on the Naughty Show. I'm gonna post it and say that it's this and that. And she's like posting all this stuff on my Twitter and shit. So I'm like, it's like a full-time job of me being like, trying to get this shit down from my Twitter stressing out, feeling like people are seeing this. And again, this is like right when like I'm feeling like some momentum and I'm just going, this person is just not, I mean, like a full-time fucking job, which I have. So it's hard for me. So mm -hmm. I would sit there and I have my phone like there and I'd be like working and then just see my phone light up. And you know, when you can tell that it's not a name, it's a number. And I just see a number and I'd be like, son of a bitch. And it would be like, you know, 20, 30 text calls a day. And the same thing's happening to Michelle. And she's like, what you should do is, because she's a ma Angela's a makeup artist, she's like, you should tell someone at the studio you're working with, or at least threaten her, that you're going to have her name put on like a blacklist so that she doesn't work. And so I do that. I'm like, you know, if you keep doing this shit, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this, get you put on this list. And she backs off for a minute. Um, but then comes right back, keeps doing it. I would get a few days of silence and I'd be like, maybe. It's interrupting my sleep. And it's like, when we, when we meet up, it's all we're talking about. 
like, cause we're kind of getting a little closer because of this situation, you know, but it's all we're talking about. It's all strategy. And I feel like such a deep level of shame <laughs> that maybe Why? because I have invited this person into my world and it was to what you were saying before, it was so careless. It was like such but a- But just saying, well, I want to have a drink. Yeah, but it was like, and she's posting screenshots of our conversation Oof. where I said, she goes, "I what, have you ever done anything crazy? And I said, I slept with a dominatrix a few nights ago or something like that. She's posting that going, this is what kind of dirtbag this guy is. So, and then still hitting you up, hey, what are you doing? It's all, yeah, you, we need to get a drink. Calling when are we a getting a drink? Bag. Yeah, when will you get a drink? I'll, if you get a drink with me, this will stop, you know? And um, and I don't know necessarily. It was just so. It was. It just kind of like blew my brain out, <laughs> and I really was unable to kind of get my footing back underneath me. I was working. I was so distracted. She was trying to like log into my Twitter. She was trying to like uh, there were and, and little She's things. Trying to log into yeah. your shit. You, you know when you get the verification yeah. code. Yeah. So I'm getting the verification code over and over again, and I'm going, "What the fuck?" You know. Um. And so, and I don't really necessarily know. I mean, I just felt really embarrassed by it. I felt like I was careless and my world was kind of being like blown up by it. And um, so this is going on and on and on. And every time I block a number, there's a new one. And then I'm in San Diego for a weekend of shows and I, um, I give the club Angela's picture. I'm like, do not let this person in, you know. Now, can I ask you this? Yeah. This is going on for a while at this point. Yeah, this is probably like She doesn't two months. show up at any of your local shows, or she are you did not doing one, many because you're working so much? Partially that. And when I did do a show, she showed up and had like taken a picture of me on stage. But didn't approach you. Didn't approach Just me. Just posted it later so you knew she was there. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Okay. So 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 now you've given this club her photo. So I'm like, don't let this person hey, We're at in. that level. We're this. at that level. Yeah. And and so one of the people that I let in is like my buddy from high school who's like a tech guy. And um, you know, like, you know, whatever works in online advertising is one of my best friends. And he's kind of helping me get stuff taken down constantly and all that. And um, so Michelle's like on that weekend, she's like, I'm gonna try to like talk to her calmly, because I know her a little bit. And I'm gonna pitch that she dates this guy I know who's on this showtime show Gigolos which I'd never heard of, but it's like, whatever, like cut dudes with big dongs mm -hmm. and uh, like us. Yeah. And um, and so she's like, she does all that, right? And she's she's basically like, she went for it. She's into him. They talked on the phone and I'm like, fucking beautiful. Hallelujah or hallelujah. Sometimes I had the H. Is there an H? I go with the H. Thank you. And um, that's what the Jesus H Christ is for. Interesting. Thank you. And um, so so then Angela texts me. She goes, hey, she sends me a picture of this dude like naked. She's like, this is the new guy I'm going with. He's way more sexual. You're kind of a cold fish. And I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> so so she's, and she like, because I blocked her number. She's like, hey, it's Angela. Like, this is the dude or whatever. How many numbers? Dude, endless. Hundreds. How many? Th How do you do that? At the end of the day, thousands. How do you do that? So it's from this this. It was from this company called Text Now in Canada. We eventually found out. And it's basically like a number generator. And there's ways to do it now, too. And it's just Off like- Off your same phone, you can generate, generate? Yeah, wow. generate endless. Text from endless numbers, endless. I mean, you think about spam calling and shit mm -hmm. like that. It's like that, that technology. But now it's being utilized for like total harassment. Right, and my buddy figured it out. And so anytime I'd be getting a message, you know, sometimes it'd be like, hey, this is Gavin Newsom. And I'm like, that could be her. My buddy be like, no, that's Gavin Newsom, or it's supposed to be Gavin Newsom. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I'm very like, we know that, right? But anyway, she's like, I'm gonna leave you alone. I'm going with this guy. So I send it to my two buddies who I've been talking to about this, and a female friend of mine, just laughing, just like this is nuts, you know. And my buddies are laughing, but the female friend of mine is like, she spelled her name differently in the text. She's like, when she said, hey, this is Angela. Like I've just so you know I've changed that name, which is always a good sign. Fair enough. In a story, mm -hmm. when you're changing names, and and I'm like, you're burying the lead. I'm like, that doesn't matter. It's fuck. Who gives a shit? She goes, as a woman, I would never misspell my own. She's like, would you misspell your name? And I'm like, no. But 
whatever, you know? And then they, she's like, are you sure that Michelle is an Angela? And I'm like, wait. Yeah, I'm like, I'm 100% Michelle what is fight, an Angela. Is this like Fight Club type shit are we talking about right now? So I'm like, there's no way. So I might, because my tech buddy, we talked about that. And he'd gone through the Twitter of Angela, and he's like, he's like, it's not. He's like, it's a real user. It's but you'd never ever seen Angela in person. No. Ah. Oh. She'd come to stuff. She texted me nonstop. But no, it was just harassment. So we start talking about it, and we start going. That could be possible. And then when? Hold on. When does it hit you where you're like, all right, that Michelle could be Angela? I still think no way because Michelle is so helpful and also going through all this same stuff and pictures of her being posted that she doesn't want out there. And we're all, we're both being tagged in this stuff. Like it's nonstop. So I'm like, there's no way. So they're like, ask for a picture of Michelle and Angela together. And the picture of Michelle, these ones that she didn't want released, they were actually her? Yeah. You could definitely tell. Yes. Okay. And they're compromising. They're like. But I mean, they weren't photoshopped. No. Or, okay. They're her. They're totally her. All right. And um. And so I'm like, hey, my friends are just for shits and giggles asking, you know, because you've you've known her for years. Do you have any pictures of you two together? And she goes, yeah, of course I do. She's like, I'll send you one tonight after your show. I go, okay, great. Um. After the show, she's like. I'm, my hard drive's all fucked up. Like, I will get some. They're just old pictures, whatever. I'm like, okay. So uh, the next day, I'm like starting to get real anxious. And she's still going like, I'm finding some, whatever. After my show, my buddy's like, call me. And I'm like, okay. And I mean, performing under the duress of this, I'm like, what's going on? You because know? you don't know if she's going to show up. Yeah. You don't know anything. And I'm not sure what's going on anymore. Right. And my buddy goes, call me. And I call him. And he's like, where are you? And I'm like, in the mall where the club is. And he goes, sit down. And I'm like, oh boy. So sit down. And he goes, Michelle is Angela. No. He goes, I'm going to send you a link to a website devoted to Michelle. And I need you to just go through and read about it and then call me back. And I'm like, okay. And he sends me this link. And it's like dozens of people talking about how Michelle is like Satan. She tries to ruin men. She tries to ruin their lives. She All she does is constant harassment. She does it through various angles, but she sets up fake people. She does all this stuff. When when I'm when these things are getting posted about me on Twitter, my DMs are like blowing up with people like, "Have you seen this? This woman is saying this about you. Like, I thought you were a good guy. Like, whatever. All this stuff's coming in, and and when I'm reading this site about her, there's so much stuff. She, it's loaded with horrible things about her. This person who I'm like, she's my hero, my help, my helper. You've had sex with her. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, we don't need to keep coming back to well, that. I feel like you're really hung she up. She met on your it. cat. Yes, she met my cat. Okay. I mean, enough. Is that better for you? Well, he should have judged her. The animals are supposed <laughs> to have an innate ability. <laughs> they, he should. Um, but he's fucking purring. He's like, hi, yeah. she's cool. Liquid IV, the number one powdered hydration brand in America, is now available and sugar free. Years in the making, hydration multiplier sugar free uses a proprietary zero sugar hydration solution with no artificial sweeteners. They've got tons of great flavors and even some new ones like white peach and sea berry. The travel packs make it easy to use daily, even if I'm on the road. One stick of liquid IV and 16 ounces of water hydrates you two times faster and more efficiently than water alone. Liquid IV combines science-backed zero-sugar technology with the brand's commitment to delicious, real flavor. No artificial sweeteners and zero sugar with a proprietary amino acid allulose blend for a sweet taste without the calories or raise blood glucose levels you get from sugar. Contains eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness with three times the electrolytes of leading sports drinks. Plus, it's non-GMO, free from gluten, dairy, and soy. Real people, real flavor, real hydrating. Now sugar-free. Grab your liquid IV hydration multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco or you can get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code HONEYDO at checkout. That's 20% off of anything you order when you use promo code HONEYDO at liquidiv.com. 
Dot-com. Now, let's get back to the dude. Um, so the site has just got... But this woman went through the lengths of posting compromising pictures yeah. of herself, and of generating number after number, and then going so far as to show you text she's getting. Yeah, and- screenshots constantly. <sighs> screenshots after screenshots from random numbers. Like when you're actually doing the math, you're going, how the fuck does someone even have time for this? Yeah. But as I'm reading the website, it's like there's so much stuff among them that she's not allowed to go to the state of Florida. She's banned from Florida. <laughs> because <laughs> she on, created a fake a, missing person. You gotta be a real piece of shit to be banned Buddy, from Florida. Buddy, you're talking about the state <laughs> where people hold up liquor stores with alligators. <laughs> yeah. And that state's like, nah. <laughs> they're killing their own kids down there. And it's like, like, oh, it's like not go. being allowed into <laughs> yeah. a bar rescue bar. Pre-save. <laughs> Being like, yeah. Banned from Florida. From Florida. (laughs) Our America within America. She can't go to. Because she like filed a fake missing persons report and kept it going for days. (laughs) What? Wasted police funds. All this shit. Um, Crazy shit like that, right? Um, Also, these little things she was telling me before like who the father of her child was and and, and, and the name. God, yeah. So that's all this is there's no kid and all that's even did you ever see a child or husband photo from Angela? No. Okay, so she didn't make up a whole family because that'd be no. that'd be crazy. No. Yeah, okay. But she, but there were lots of I mean, again, my buddy was like, This is a real person, you know. Cause we had talked about it. But but so now I'm like in this mall in San Diego and I'm like, holy fuck, what the fuck am I gonna do? Um, meanwhile, she's like, hey, I found a picture. And she sends me a picture of her with someone who's not Angela. She's like, she's had a lot of work done since then. And I'm like, you know, like like she had like a face swap. Like she had like the face off Nicholas Cage. Like she swapped her face. She's like she touched a vase during a she lightning grew four storm. inches in her 30s. Yeah, her, fa- her face became a different head. What? Like insulting. But I just go, oh, okay. Yeah, that, yeah, okay, I'm good. Poof, I was worried for a minute, but there you and her for sure are on a boat. And, um, how often are you seeing Michelle physically I'm during seeing Michelle, this time? Pro- not a and lot. And how long is this time? Six months? What We're are we probably talking? at about three months three around months. now. Three months, all right. And, uh, I'm seeing her probably once. I pr- Total, month? I probably went out with her like seven times. And a lot of it was, like I said, I mean, it's not the best light to be reflected in, but, it was like, I'd be like, I'm going to be done with work at 1130. She'd be like, I'll meet you at 1130. I'd be like, fine. You know, it was really all I had time for. So mm-hmm. I was like, okay. Um, so, but yeah. So for the amount of time, I was talking to her a lot more. You never went to her place? No. Mm. No. wonder how telling that would have been. There's a lot of stuff you'll find in retrospect <laughs> that's quite telling. <laughs> There's a lot of, of courses. Of course. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Next time, hit me up. I'll be like, yeah, Garrett, listen, you man, club, you're going to get robbed. You're going to get mugged. Fight Club is a great cop because I'm in a parking lot drinking a beer and then dropping it to myself. It's literally what is happening. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I'm just in a basement beating myself and people are like, what? And I'm like, what are y'all looking at? <laughs> um... So now I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, because now you got to get, we got to address it and get the fuck out of here. We got to figure it out. I think partially because I'm so rattled, I am trying to not, you fucking lie. Yeah. I'm trying to Homer Simpson into the bushes. Yeah, but also this is a unstable person and going hard and aggressive may be the wrong move. It, Even though you want to be like, what the fuck? Yeah. It made me, a lot of things I'm about to say made me, you know, and I'm not trying to like, gender this issue but when i think about like women in situations of abuse or you know where there is like sexual advance any of that stuff that come out 20 years later or they don't pursue a charge and dudes are always like well why the fuck didn't she mention it like the day after this situation makes me so understanding to that. Again, not trying to say what I went through is like abuse. Fair enough. But there's this level of like- This is abuse though. It is. 
but it's not like I'm just not trying to be like women. I'm a victim. You know what I mean? Like yeah. me too. Yeah. You know, like I'm just clip saying clip that curse. <laughs> do not clip that. <laughs> clip that. <laughs> That's terrible. Gareth Reynolds running for Senate. <laughs> women me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But because, <laughs> because A, you're ashamed, mm -hmm. and B, you're like, I don't want to fucking, I'm not trying to go back and like rip the cobra's head off. Well, let's also I'm just go trying to, to get C. out of the jungle. This is insane. 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 The fact that, you know, uh, what is it? What's the Ace Ventura? Lois is Einhorn or yeah, whatever. Uh, Einhorn, Einhorn, is Einhorn is Finkel. Einhorn is Finkel. Yeah. I'm having my Einhorn is Finkel. You are having an Einhorn is Finkel and right it's, now. And all the little, like, your mind is blown in this telling. This is like, I'm like, I can't process. Yeah, because you got to go step by step to the do, undo all time. this now. It's the full time so You still got to go this. perform? You're still on your weekend? Doing shows. Oof. Slept in my car one of the days because I was like, I don't. I told her which hotel I was in. Like, I mean, it's just like rattled me. And um, okay, so now I know, right? So I'm basically your friend is your enemy. I'm trying to Homer Simpson into the bushes. Mm -hmm. I'm going, hey, this whole thing's rattling me. Um, meanwhile, I'm calling the cops. I'm calling a lawyer, and my friend ends up putting me in touch with a lawyer who's not in any way associated with this type of law, but she's awesome. And she's going, here's the reality. You know, as I'm going through the stuff that you're showing me, she goes, Michelle, as Michelle, has not made a threat to you. She's been nice. She's been sweet. She's been helpful. Angela, from her thousand different numbers, has been harassing you. You have a case against Angela, who's not real. Your issue is proving that Michelle is Angela. And she's like, and that's a lot harder than you might think that it is. I go to the cops. The cops are like, so the problem is this woman is trying to fuck you a lot? And I'm like, yeah. That sounds like the cops. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, officer. And he's like, I think a lot of guys would really like that problem. And I'm like, bro, oh my. Take, so, take this down to West Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they're like, literally made me be like, oh my God. So like, so I'm like, okay, not cop. The lawyer is like, you've got to be able to prove that it's her, which is possible. But for now, I'm just trying to get away. So I start telling Michelle stuff like, oh, yeah, you know. Oh, also, I go through those DMs that I'm getting every time she posts stuff, and I'm going, that's her, that's her, that. So she's heightening my stress by being like, hey, I saw this tweet. Hey, I saw this thing. Hey, all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, 100 people have seen this. Well, no, she's created 100, you know, sock puppet accounts and, and stuff that now, again, I recognize so easily. But at the time, I was just like, nobody do this. It's crazy. It's not an existence if you're doing this. And um, so I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of going through. I'm like, I'm, I'm a little too stressed out. And I'm talking to a shrink. And the shrink is basically like, I should probably just try to back off from this whole situation. She's like, oh, great. Who's your shrink? I'm actually looking for a shrink. I'm like, nah, I don't think we should see the same shrink. Mm -hmm. My friends are getting um, text messages now she's from these numbers. She's got my friend's numbers. She's texting my friends being like, hey, this is Gareth. This is my new phone number. Hey, you know, whatever. My friends are getting calls from random numbers. My friends what? are getting calls from my number at 3 a.m., which I was like, how can you do that? You can do that. Just spoofing my number. Fucking friends, three, four in the morning. Why are you calling me? You woke my kid up. All the I'm just going, it's not me. But again, the I'm so embarrassed. Now, even more so. Because now I'm like, well, the one fine horn is, you know, Einhorn is Finkel. So yeah. I'm trying to... And, um, and it's going on and on. I'm trying to just get away from it. It's not stopping. It's going crazy. But I still have Michelle being like, because I haven't told her, hey, are you okay? Like the day that she posts a bunch of stuff about me on Twitter again. Hey, did has Angela posted anything about you lately? No, nah, I'm good. You know, but I'm like, you fucking lunatic. You crazy. Like you're, and she's like totally getting off on the ability to be like, stress him out. Is he okay? Um, so, as I'm backing away, this is nuts. As I'm backing away, I am. Um, it's still happening, and then my friend is like, you know, probably a week later, like, "Hey, there's something else I got to tell you," and it's he's found her escort profile. Escort, um, yes. Oof. So she's an escort in Vegas, and um, 
He's like, it's active. So I'm like at Arrested Development. I have to go into Mitch Hurwitz's office and I'm just like, hey, buddy, you know, and he's like running this show. He's like stressed. Yeah, yeah, what's going on? And I'm like, I need to go down the street to get STD tests because uh, I ended up sleeping with this woman who's a sex worker and I wasn't protected all the time. And he was like, oh, OK, uh, take a lunch, whatever, whenever you need to take lunch, buddy, go down there, get the full gambit. You know, somehow I'm like, good Lord, clean. And I'll never forget the way they ran me through the clean results. It was like, are you ready for your results? And I was like, I mean, I get, all right, blah, 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 clean, blah, 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 negative, blah, 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 negative. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, I keep expecting to be like, AIDS, you got it. And I'm like, ah, but she's just, it just in a way where I would now, have a note. Now, what you do have. Yeah. <laughs> are, you, are you sitting down, you know, all that. Like what my buddy did when he did the real. You sitting down, <laughs> you Homer Simpson in the wrong bush, amigo. Yeah, you did. Um, and then, like, I took a yoga class, and this this woman in yoga class, like, somehow, like, recognized me, and we started talking, and so I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to take her out. And I'm like, still, this is like, I'm kind of, this, I'm probably about five months in at this point, and I'm so- and, and how much, at this point of the five months, how much is Rachel still hitting you up? R Angela? I mean, Angela still hitting you up. Don't Rachel me. Sorry. We'll get to her. All right. Um, Often. Is Still. Yes. So Michelle's still doing the Rachel thing all this time. Angela. It's, I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> they're Angela. all made up names yeah, anyway. they are. Um, but yes. Yes, yes she still. is. Still aggressively hitting you with Angela Not stuff. as aggressive, but it's almost like I'll be like six days but without it. not letting it go. Six days without it, and I'm starting to go, maybe, maybe. And then it's like back. Maybe, maybe. But during that six days, you're hearing from Michelle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Michelle is trying to have and, a normal you, relationship. Have you seen Michelle since you found no, this out? No, because I I talked to the the attorney I talked to was like you cannot meet up with Michelle again, because Michelle had a history. First of all, has a fucking record. Second of all, banned from Florida, bro. Had, I mean, come on, we're talking banned liquor store alligator. She and has a record, and and some of it is like abuse claims, and and she's like, what's going to happen is. Because Michelle's like, I want to give you this gift. If we're not going to talk, I want to give you this gift. You're pushing for this gift. I'm going, no. I mean, you know, she's like, you meet up with her. She fucking does fight club herself. Says, hey, you fucking hit her. So I'm like, nope, nope, nope. So I'm just skirting, skirting, skirting. Like, not going to meet up with you. And and it's it's awkward. And it's it's making Angela fucking worse. You know, because Angela's the alter ego. So Angela's in more of an attack mode. And... um. It's straight up Jekyll and Hyde shit right nuts. here. This is nuts. And so um, so this this woman in yoga class, so so we go out, right? And after we go out, I follow her on Instagram the next day. That Later that day, she texts me and she goes, look, dude, if you have a girlfriend, you can just fucking tell me. Don't take someone out when you have a girlfriend. Sends me a screenshot of a random number. And it's just like, hey, this is Gareth's girlfriend. I know that you went out with him. Um, or I know that you guys are talking. You should stop. And I'm just like, I don't even have the words to be like. It's not a girlfriend. I have a stalker. I I have an Einhorn and Finkel who ugh, fuck you know. I'm like okay, Godspeed. Um, but it's it's like that continuing <laughs> that sort of shit. It's like that all the time. Other friends of mine, anyone I couldn't follow anyone on fucking Instagram because she was going at me. Um, and it's yeah, just going on like that for for ages and ages. Again, still hundreds of texts, calls. Hundreds. Then I'm at arrested. And Wait one second. When Angela calls, she never leaves a voicemail. No, not once. No, and you call back, and it's like it's like some you know I'm going. Ah, it's text now. And these are in the middle of the night. So in the middle of the night, I'd like hit my phone and be like, oh good, nothing. Or I'd go, oh my god, six texts, and then I'd be up. So I'm not sleeping. I'm not eating. I'm fucking drinking white wine like a like a housewife, like a real housewife. I'm like, I am like friends of mine would just be like, hey, here's a six pack of Trader Joe wine. I'd be like, that's the nicest thing anyone ever did for me. <laughs> you know, as I was like emaciated yet bloated at the same time. And then um, Michelle's like, she's looking for your home address. Now keep in mind, Michelle's been to my place. So she knows my home address and Angela's not fucking real. But this is like, I'm like, there's an escalation here. And then she goes, she knows it. She figured it out. Sends me a screenshot. He lives here, you know, in, in wherever I live. Is she posting that? No, but she's just saying to her, now right. I know where he lives. 
So I race home from where I go to Mitch again, Mitch Hurwitz had arrested and I just go, hey, so now this star, uh huh, okay, yeah, go, go. You know, like my updates to him are he's like, I probably shouldn't have invited this guy. Um, get home, fucking think that there's going to be some fucked up shit going on and um, nothing. I put like a fucking dresser in front of my door. I sleep with a knife by my bed. <laughs> I end up getting an Airbnb for like 10 days. And again, I know it's all bullshit. But I'm still like, I don't know. And during that 10 days, is Michelle still hitting you yeah. up? Yeah. Yes. Are you okay? Where are you? Did you did are you, you talking on the phone? I'm just trying to I'm trying to keep it as little contact as possible, but in as okay a place as I still feel like you think I'm both of these people. No, no, no. I don't. I don't. Oh, she would say things yes. like that. And I go, no, no, no. Because I'm again, I'm just my I'm just trying to Homer Simpson in the fucking bush. And um and so if someone doesn't know that reference, they're going to be like, the hell is, who is this man? What is this man talking about? But I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to sneak out on this shit. And, um, and then it, and then it stops over the holidays. It, it stops. She takes like, she stops like December, nothing for like, whatever, two months. I'm like, this is fucking amazing. I think it's done. I'm sleeping again. I'm like eating properly. I'm even like starting to work out a little bit. I mean, I saw a picture of myself on Arrested Development when I was doing this shit and I was like, Jesus Christ. Like wine, big wine should not have that photo because that that's slander. Um, <laughs> so, and then it starts again. Starts up again. Right after the holidays. Right after the holidays. Starts up again. Texts. It's, hey, uh, my girlfriend got a text from your number. You better leave us the fuck alone. You know, like a new angle. So I know she's orchestrating it, but I'm like, she's shifting tactics. So then I do get a fucking lawyer. And um, and the lawyer basically is like, here's what you got to do. You got to go through everything and build a case. I'm friends with someone who works in in law so loosely. you got to take this. Yes. So we got to, we go through everything and we build this fucking case. Like where it's just every text, filing it under what it is, what laws are being broken, all that stuff. And and the lawyer is expensive as shit, as you know. Mm -hmm. And I I'd never experienced really a situation like where a lawyer's like, oh, for sure. And then you're like, that email was $500? Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't know. I had heard that they were uh, blood suckers, but quarter, I was, You're paying on the quarter hour. Yeah. yeah. For an email, though. Mm -hmm. Like, I would Minimum be like, quarter I, hour, I mean, bro. I'm just like, why did I reply? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. You know, they're like, thanks. I'm like, that was a $250 thanks. Um, so, so as I'm building this case, I'm going through this stuff and I'm like missing shit. I'm like, oh, she took pictures of my friend's house and oh, she, Good like, God. I just stopped checking them eventually just because, but the threatening nature of this is escalating and stepping up, you know, and um, and as I'm going through it, it's fucking traumatic and I'm, I'm building this case and we're gonna go for a restraining order, but what you need to do is prove the fucking metadata. You need to prove that it came from this place. Where she lives, you need to get a fucking PI to go where she lives, and that person needs to monitor it and be able to connect the metadata. Meaning what? Like it pinged off this cell tower Meaning by her I home, have, and it ba went basically you can specifically say it came from this fucking location. Okay, right? Because she's we know so much. They couldn't shouldn't they be able to ping the phone too? Like specifically this device? Yeah, but that's like I mean, think about when Apple was like wouldn't like I can't remember what the case oh, that's was. Right, they wouldn't give their info. You're not yeah, you're not right. able to get into that shit like i could do it i still could prove it it just would cost so much fucking yeah, probably money. a quarter of a million dollars and then when i'm writing on arrested too um someone explains this situation to another person i work with and she goes this happened to my friend and my buddy goes same sort of situation she goes same person no so she's what? done this she's done it to so many dudes in the business and like tons of them. What's her number? Yeah, <laughs> well, that's hard to answer, honestly. <laughs> Get a scroll. Um, and so, and she's like, so you're telling someone this, and then they say this. My, happened? my buddy is because I'm not there. He's like, Garrett's not here today because oh. of this. He can't get out of bed because he's like fucking losing his mind. And then she says, "This happened to my friend." And he same goes, person. "Same situation, no, same person." 
this person did it, except this guy fucking lost his mind and like deleted his social media. And then there's an other people. She, another person was like, oh, she made up a fake pregnancy with this guy. She said she was pregnant. She, um, was like, I'm going to go get the abortion, wouldn't go get it. Turned out she wasn't pregnant. So after the Christmas break part, I st I had to stop smoking weed. Like, you know when you're like unhappy, you can't smoke weed? You know what's so funny? Yes. I, whenever my worst times I smoke weed, all it does, marijuana helps me focus. Yes. And when I'm in bad times and I smoke, it helps me focus on the wrong The panic. Shit. The panic, the anxiety, the I, future tripping, the, 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 the spiraling. I, I can't either. When I'm when I'm at my lowest, mm-mm. No. And that's what happened to me. Like, I, I was the happiest fucking stoner who ever stoned. And then it was just like, <laughs> I would take- weed for you? Dude, completely. But then after the two month break, I'm like, I think I can smoke weed. And I don't know how this timed out. I think she just got lucky. But literally the first day I smoked weed, it was NFL Sunday. I was in my bed. I was like, fuck it. I'll take a couple of hits. I had a couple of rips watching the Falcons game. And I get a text from the random number and it goes, I hear you got someone pregnant. And I had been counting the days to when I would be clear of that threat. Mm -hmm. And it was like coming up to it, which is why I was like, I can smoke some weed. And then it, I was like, fuck. But I was also at the point now where I was like, I don't believe anything. So it, I let it go. But she was still trying every angle she could to make me be like, like, and I played out the baby part in my head. Like with my friends, I'd war gamed it. You know, I was like, I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna fight for full custody is what I'm gonna do. And my friends were like, who is this man? <laughs> right. And I was like, I mean, you can't have a fucking kid living with this fucking person. You know, while she's in like a bedroom, like playing Sims with comedians from like Vegas. Yeah. You know, with their like emotions. So I like I war gamed it out and then eventually stopped hearing about it. And I'm like, well, I think it's fucking fake. Um, but again, was like, if it isn't, let's fucking go. Um, what was your conversation like with the lady at work? Who's like, this happened to, to my friend. She Did just, you not talk to her friend? Did he get an attorney? Um, I didn't talk to him. No. He was so fucked up. Really? Yeah, that he was like, I don't want to have, I don't want her to know I'm around. I don't want to talk to anyone about it. Holy shit. Yeah. He, he like stopped pursuing stuff for a while. Two L's or one? Two. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so, and, and what she said to me at work, she goes, she just needs to find another target. But I, but as I'm building this case, that I'm could going. be the year, two years. Yeah, Who that's knows? what I'm saying. I'm like, yeah. I'm not going to fucking wait. I'm going to go at it. So as I'm building this case and stuff, it just kind of is stopping again. I'm about to file for restraining orders. Um, you know, like I'm right there, but I hate my lawyer. And since then have found a lawyer who like, again, is like, if we need to go, we can fucking go. Not cheap, but, and I know other people. So it's like, you could get a few people on board with this shit. Um, but as it's happening, it's just stopping. And I'm kind of going through this and I'm just going, well, why am I going to pursue this if it's not happening anymore? Go through all that, have to go fucking see her in court, have to work on all this other shit. And so I just kind of like let it go and never said, um, hey, I know you're both people. Never. Never. That's why part of the reason why like but she stopped contacting you? How long has it been, knock on wood? Well, I had to make a lot of changes. I had to change lots of stuff, personal stuff, stuff you don't want to change. I have to change, like, bank accounts, have to change. You had to do all that. Yeah, because well, because part of the thing, too, is it's like you get a thing from AT&T that could be regular. Like, hey, you need your fucking account. Was Someone tried to hack your account. Well, it could just be, like, some fucking dude in, you know, like, Ghana, like, trying to fuck with you. You know what I mean? But also, I'm like, could be her. And that is kind of what happens. So you're on hold and you're, everything is just compounding. Your life is trying to put out fires. And, um, and so I had to make a lot of fucking changes. I have not had direct harassment since then, but I don't know. How long has it been? This was probably about five years ago. Jesus. But I've and never gone never on record. showed up at a local show or she's never gone as far as to. No, because what I realized eventually was this person has put herself into so much like legal jeopardy that she has to be really careful with what she does. She cannot do that. 
She cannot. She cannot fuck up. Even though she did show up at your show and take a picture. Yes, but as the other one. But right. yes. Oh, I but see. that's when I was dating her. You are uh, going out. I wasn't even dating. Right. I was just like you know going out with her. But she did that as her. All these. I'm not. I mean, all the Fight Club stuff you're talking about. Like years later, like the Vegas shooting. Like I'm like she wasn't in a fucking Vegas shooting. God, yeah, I didn't even think of that. That's part how she being got me to give her that number so that she knew that's how she had the number. So then she knew she could fucking go crazy on me, and not wonder how she got my number. You know, which eventually she probably would have done anyway because she's probably got like talk about war gaming. I mean, she's probably got like Man. choose your own misadventure. Oh. But but all that stuff. You know, two two years later, I'd be like, "Wait, the fuck? That's fucking bullshit." You Imagine know, she putting that told mind me to good use. this is why I seem so fucking stupid because I was buying so much bullshit. She told me at one point that while I'm going through all this she shit got with her, a little dude, bit, a little bit. Well, I mean, again, like I by was a person that wasn't a person by another real person. <laughs> here's the difference. I was like, "Leave me alone." I was not like, "When can we meet up?" I love you. I was like, fuck off. Like, I just wanted, I was ignoring her. I did believe her to be real, for sure. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm like, I, now. But why wouldn't you, though? Me now, right. so different than that. And I had friends at the time who were like, what are you, fucking simple? Like, this is, of course it is. But I had, like, my friend who's, like, knows his shit was, like, not the same person. I had, it was just so savvy that I was, like, can't be, cross my mind, for sure. But it just seemed so unbelievable, as deep in as I was, that I was just like, can't be, cannot be, and um, and then so as yeah, and then eventually, so you know, I just was like so rattled that she's saying, I know the GM of the Packers, and I'm like, huh? She's like, I can get you tickets to a Packer game. I'm like, really? Wow. I'm like, oh, she's helping me with her, and she's getting me, got me Packer tick. And then I'm like, wait, she didn't know the GM of the pack. She was fucking, she's full of shit. She just like went to StubHub, and she had, she went on fucking StubHub. All this stuff I was able to eventually like, you know, prove as I built this case and stuff. But that's just basically where it it ended, where I basically was like, okay, whatever. And then a year later, touring in Australia again, and um, someone texts me and goes, this dude has been going out with your stalker. And I'm like, oh my God, it's another comedian. And I'm like, Do we know him? Do I know him? Yeah. Okay. And we're, I'm like, oh my fucking God. And he's like, it's like back to the future. Or you know what I mean? Where yeah. like Marty's like, dude, listen to yourself. He's like, yeah. buddy, I don't know who you are, yeah, but yeah. not me. I'm from this time. I'm saying to him, dude, she's, no, 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 no. He's like, no, no, she's, I'm going, buddy, I went through this. She is that person and that person and that person and that person. He's going, Dude, it's not. She would have to be out of her mind to do that. I'm like, bad news. She's out of her fucking mind. And and so as far as I know, he that situation ended too. And as far as I know, it's like she's still out there, still going, you know, probably still doing it. Um, just a parasite who moves from host to host to host. Sometimes Jeez. from people who actually do host, you know, like countdown shows and stuff because it's all industry related but um but yeah and like i have i have been like so hesitant to kind of like talk about yeah. it because it's like because it's gonna be out there again it's out there but Part it's a me fucking makes me... doozy spelled d-e-w-z-y we'll be right back uh Part of me makes me feel bad for her, though. She was an escort who gave it to you for free. So That's the part you feel bad for? A little bit. Um, but I want to know two questions so everybody can understand. This is 100% why I don't do this. Yes. Okay, listen, I'm not a virgin. I'm not innocent. Yeah. But I've had a lot of writer-producer jobs over the years, and those are where I tended to date the ladies, yeah. not ever in comedy or, or randos on the road or anything like that. Um, was it worth it? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of dudes who I know who are more famous than me, who like do this all the time. And I'm just going, buddy, stop. Cause you will it, like, I know it feels like a speed bump, but man, it is a fucking bed of nails. 
the, you do so it is out there. When you're out on the road now, are you much more cautious? Or are Buddy, you just handshaking them? They like, call <laughs> me. They call me the Ryan Sickler stand up. <laughs> You know, I'll hug the older ladies and stuff, but those young cute ones that come up, I'll give you a handshake. What I do is, this is what I do. If I'm going to take someone home, I like want to see the phone. If it's a flip phone, I'm like, what are you doing? You want to go get a drink? (laughs) Also, if you just come up to me after a show and you want to bang me, I know there's something wrong with you. It is a red flag. I know there's a red red flag. flag. It's like when someone wants to run for president, you're like, probably shouldn't be president. And anyone who wants it shouldn't like, know. This is a mess right yeah, here. Yeah, this, this is a, pro- is a pro- mess. You have a problem. Now I'm going to think this story and be like, nah. No. You know what happened to Gareth Reynolds? I'll tell them that story and scare them off. They're like, I'm, I'm fucking dry now. Yeah. Like, I'm like, yeah, good. Get uh, dude, out of here. It, I'm t- and then the other thing is like, dude, I, when I'm going That's through the crazy. thick of this, I'm like on tour a lot. I was like, I mean, a part of me is like reticent to talk about how much it affected me because it is, I'm sure, gratifying for her in some way when she sees this or whatever. But I mean- I was not eating. I would have morning sickness. No joke. No joke. Morning sickness. I was the pregnant one. I would like wake up day of the show and I would be like dry heaving and just be like throwing up. Only time my brain kind of got away from it was when I was performing, when I was doing shows, when I was like doing the podcast. But like, you know, I'd be at shows and I would be like before it, like looking at my phone and my phone would be backstage. I wouldn't think about it. I'd have like two hours, like if I'm doing the dollop or like an hour if I was doing stand up to not fucking think about it. And would she it. know your schedules Dude, and text so yes. she knew you were on stage so no. you'd come back? Well, she knew the day of shows. Mm. She, Angela would fucking blow me up. You know, starting a website about you. Hey, I just pitched you uh, for an article because you're such a douchebag and you like, you know, I sent them the DM messages you had with me. And it is crazy that uh, the, the, so what is that? Split personality? Bipolar? What the hell is that? I really don't even know. I, I mean, to, I actually don't fully know. What I do know is that it's, I mean, obviously it's sociopathic. It's, yeah, there's a borderline personality disorder for sure. But this is the sort of shit that like, you know, 20 fucking years ago, if you were like this, you you either followed someone or you stalked them in a weird way. The internet and the laws that are in place as far as this shit goes are so inadequate. And do you feel like they protect the stalker more? Absolutely. Yeah. Without question. I mean, there is this, the, you are able to do this shit with such ease. Again, I'm not saying like, I'm a fucking genius in this situation by any stretch. But you should not be able to harass people from as many numbers as you fucking want, whether you fucking create fake people or not. Like, you should just not be able to do that. You should be held accountable for these things. When I went to the fucking cops and I'm like, this is who's doing this, they didn't even want to engage in the conversation about anything other than how she looked. And that's what I mean when, like, I have, like, I don't even want to say, like, empathy because I just... The way that we think of people and how they take trauma and compartmentalize it and how they have to wait to feel comfortable for it is totally misconstrued and skewed. And I was never someone who was like, well, why why is she coming out with the allegation 10 years later? But after this, I'm like, why would she come out with the allegation immediately? You are in such, and again, I'm, I, my version of this is different, but the, the paralyzation I felt throughout it was one where it was like, I couldn't fucking get out of bed some days with what was going on. I was fucking losing my mind, losing my mind over this shit. And and again, this went on for just under a year. And so like, I really do look at it like, you know, a year of my life was like kind of ruined because of this. And it's it's not as easy as me being like, hey, online harassment detective, I'm filing a case against this person, go do it. No, it's, hey, go get a private eye. Hey, you got the Pay private eye. a lot eye. of money. Dude, crazy. You think lawyers are expensive. These fucking dudes are nuts. And- Pay that guy. Now pay a lawyer. Now all that, which to some extent, again, I have done a lot of that in the long run, but um, but it just should not be that way. You are able to do this. These people are able to fucking harass the shit out of people, and there's really very little you can do, and it's like that level of how you feel when you're in the midst of it, I think people really understate how that feels. 
I don't think I handle it right <laughs> at all. I don't I don't know that there's a right way to yeah. handle something like this. Who the hell has gone? And I can't imagine many people have gone through But also through you don't like feel like you're not like opening a town it's hall. It's almost like it's not real. Yeah. You know, like. And you don't want to be like, look at what my fucking dick got me into. You know what I mean? You don't want to be like, everyone listen. Here's another problem my penis got. You know, you're just like, you're hiding it. You're hiding it. You're fucking sheltering it. Like when my buddy at work told people that was going on, I was like, why the fuck did you do that? Because you just know people are looking at you different. And they were. They were like trying to help me. But I'm like, I don't want to be looked at like that. And it and it was just like, it just changed me on a level that like, I'll never go back. Now, I think she still hits me up. I think she still does stuff on oh, Instagram. So if you see and, another uh, profile, you think it might be her? I know now what's yeah. bullshit. You know. Yeah, that's dangerous. It doesn't even matter it's if dangerous. I know it's bullshit. I don't engage in that world anymore. You can't. Yeah. It's like you're- The internet, you're right. It's before when you were crazy, you had to put that crazy out there and somebody, yeah. or at least hide it long enough. You had to be like trash sniffing. Now you can, yeah. Now you can just hide that craziness forever on, yeah. a, on in the digital world. Yes. And then you look and at this person's among, Instagram and they're like- It mm, looks normal. Yes. But then you're like, oh, good day at the pumpkin patch. You're like, you fucking psycho. You wow. texted me from 800 numbers that day. You know? Gareth Reynolds. First of all, I'm glad you're okay. Glad we I'm have not. no STDs here. <laughs> I do. Five. <laughs> You're not listening. <laughs> Something to cherish her forever. Uh, yeah, right. they'll leave behind the calling Dude, card. What a wild story that I've never heard anything like that. Yeah. Have you? Well, you. No, I. I mean, I want to know who this is. When we're done. I want to know who this is and who else she dated because I want people. I want to know. We got to look out for this lady. She's in our world. I, I don't know right now how active she is, but I mean, I, you know, like I said, I mean, it's even if it's not just her, this is fucking out there. Yeah. They're like the people she went for were people that she was fans of. She just like listen to my podcast or she watched this TV show mm -hmm. and she liked this guy or whatever the fuck it was. It's it's that morphed into I want to control their life. <laughs> Ruin it, not ruin control it, yeah. ruin it. Yeah, but be able to, um, like, you know, run an emotional symphony when I feel like conducting. Right. And, um, and yeah, I mean, that's like, if there's one thing that you can take from it, it's just fucking don't be like Gary. Be fucking smart. Don't be like Gary, bro. Just be like Don't aware. let your dick do your thinking. No. Yeah. No. It's, no pun intended, hard. It no. is. No. No. And it was hard. <laughs> Damn, dude. Yeah, I told you I had a fucking doozy. You sure did have a doozy. Yeah. But I just, like, couldn't, like... This was, like, the place where I'm, like... Because part of me is, like, I should be doing stand-up on some of this. But I just have never told it, you know? You do have to tell it. I have to, to some extent, because it's, like, the craziest traumatic thing of... And the other thing, you know who was amazing during this time? There were a few people who were amazing. One of the people who ran the Facebook group was amazing. Dave Anthony just kept being like, he just kept being like, this is a person shouting in a closet. Because I would see the stuff going on my Twitter feed and he'd be like, it's not as bad as you think. That's why she had to amplify it with DMs. But Dave just kept being like, it's a crazy person shouting in a closet. Mm -hmm. so, so there you go. That's why um, stay single. <laughs> Stay um, plug and promote everything again, please. Uh, I'm looking to hook up with women on the road. Uh, so slide in my DMs if whenever you're, you're ready. Stable. Yeah, if you're mentally stable, <laughs> mentally unstable, let's roll the dice. That's what I'm after. My new special, Roll the Dice, uh, premieres on Unsolved Mysteries uh, next Thursday. Uh, go check that out. Um, also, I'm actually now selling a, a very a chlamydia pill. Um, which is unbelievable. Most of these things, you got to go through a, a much stronger cycle of antibiotics. These things bang them out in two days. That's why it's called a round of applause. Um, <laughs> get that. Get uh, that. Get that. <laughs> uh, promo code Michelle, one L, unless two if you're texting. Um, no, go listen. I mean, listen to the dollop. Uh, I have a, another podcast I'm starting with my buddy Jake Johnson uh, called We're Here to Help, which uh, if you go to my Instagram, there's an email where you can message problems. It's like an old timey call in show. And then uh, my specials, GarethReynolds.com. Click the special link. There's Gareth's, which is crowd work. There's uh, England Weed and the rest, which is uh, pure stand up, little crowd work. And then tour dates, GarethReynolds.com. 
And then and then the dollops on the road in August. And the pastimes. Yeah, go to go to dollopodcast.com. We're on the road in August when this comes out. And the pastimes. You're not going to acknowledge that I got it correct there? What, what, buddy. For the release date, bro. You said I want I got it right. <laughs> Who knows when this will come out. Uh, as always, guys, thank you very much. Ryan Sickler on all social media, ryansickler.com. We'll talk to you all next week. Mm-hmm.